You know that song? Sing along if you know the words. didn't make it. <laughs> I think he's only got three eyes in his tennis shoes. So today is the first in a series on the faith of Mr. Rogers. I thought I would introduce it today and then order up the books and give you a chance to read it along with me, a book by Amy Hollingsworth called The Faith of Mr. Rogers. And we'll finish that series in October. We'll get the books out now. How many of you saw the movie at the Grand? How many of you cried? How many of you watched Mr. Rogers when you were growing up? Oh, yeah. So Amy Hollingsworth, the author of The Faith of Mr. Rogers, says, For Fred Rogers, perhaps the earliest prototype of the true neighbor, was an elderly woman who lived in his hometown of Latrobe, Pennsylvania. She was his grandmother's age. Everybody called her Mama Belle. And a lot of times, five-year-old Freddie as he was called back then, Freddie would come up to her back porch steps looking for a snack. And he would arrive strategically at her back porch because it led him straight into the kitchen and she would make him his favorite snacks, toast sticks. He'd come to the back door, she'd say, come over for some toast sticks, Freddie. And one day, Mama Belle asked Freddie if he'd like to make the toast sticks on his own. Imagine the delight of a five-year-old able to master a grown-up task and his pride at being trusted with her specialty. So he was prompted to put the bread in the toaster, allowed to slowly butter it, the toasted slice, and then put some jam on it and carefully cut the toast into four long sticks. Very soon after she had taught him how to do that, Mama Belle passed away. But many decades later, Fred wondered if somehow Mama Belle had known she was reaching toward heaven and wanted Freddie to have this experience as a comfort for him, as a reminder of their unique friendship. Because even though she was gone, he could now make toast sticks on his own. And he would always think of Mama Belle as he made them. So isn't it amazing? His phrase that he's known for is about Mama Belle. Won't you be my neighbor? She was his first neighbor. Because sometimes, see, food is more than food. Sometimes a neighbor is more than a neighbor. My wife Cindy remembers her neighbors growing up, Doc and Clayne. Cindy says, I don't know why they called her Clayne. Maybe it's because her name was Agnes McLean. Must have started with one or another of the kids in the neighborhood, and Cindy was the youngest 
of a stack of kids that ran her neighborhood. What she does remember is visiting Clayne when Doc was at work. She says, I don't remember what we did much or what she said, but I remember going into her house through her kitchen to the den. She says, I remember the photos she had of her and Doc all dressed up for a dinner with friends at somebody's house. I think that's the way it was back in the 60s. Cindy said, I do remember she would tell me stories about my dad, bringing me to see her when I was a baby before he died when I was just three years old. I do remember she gave me big hugs, Cindy said. Seemed like she was nothing but love. And she died while I was in elementary school. Sometimes a neighbor is more than a neighbor. My dad died in January, five years ago, and certain foods will always remind me of him. Because my mom, we were a house of three boys, she pretty much locked the kitchen down at night after the sun went down. But my dad could get into the kitchen after supper, we'd be watching TV, all the milking was done around 10 o'clock, dad would take a cereal bowl and fill it with powdered sugar with a little butter and cocoa, just the right amount of milk, stir it, and it became chocolate frosting. Then he'd each give us, give us each a spoon, and that bowl of chocolate frosting would last about three minutes. And we would fight over who got to lick the bowl. Now, that bowl of frosting is more than just a bowl of frosting. It's a part of him that I hang on to when I make frosting for my kids. When Mr. Rogers received the Emmy for his Lifetime Achievement Award, he asked that the audience, full of famous actors and actresses, he asked them to take 10 seconds and remember somebody who'd made a difference in their lives. Let's do that. 10 seconds. Remember somebody who's made a difference in your life. I'll count. Go. Did you have more than one? See, two disciples were walking away from Jerusalem the day after their teacher had been killed by the Romans, and a stranger started walking with them and talking about what had happened and why it happened. And they didn't know who it was until they sat down for supper, and something about the way that stranger broke the bread, and thank God, opened their eyes. And they knew Jesus was there with them, just like he'd been so many times before. Because see, sometimes bread is more than bread. You may have heard the story about the little boy who had decided he wanted to go out and find God. And he knew it would probably be a long trip, so he packed his lunch, four packs of Twinkies, two cans of root beer, and he hit the road. He went out on his journey a few blocks until he came to a park and sat on one of the benches. And there was an old woman there looking at the pigeons. And the boy sat down beside her and watched the pigeons too. And he got hungry and he pulled out some of his Twinkies. And as he ate, he noticed the woman was watching him. So he offered her one and she accepted it, smiled at him. He thought that was the most beautiful smile he had ever seen. So wanting to see it again, he opened up a can of root beer and offered it to her. And she smiled again, that beautiful smile. For a long time, they just sat there in the park, eating Twinkies, drinking root beer, smiling at each other, watching the pigeons. Neither of them said a word. Finally, the little boy realized it was getting late. He decided he needed to go home. He started to leave, took a few steps, turned back, and gave the woman a hug. And she smiled even brighter than she had before. When he got home, his mom noticed how happy he was, but strangely quiet. She said, what did you do today? He said, oh, I had lunch in the park with God. She said, really? He said, you know, she has the most beautiful smile in the world. 
Meanwhile, the woman left the park, returned to her house. Their son noticed something different about her. He said, what would you do today, Mom? She said, I ate Twinkies and drank root beer in the park with God. Before the son could say anything, she said, you know, God's a lot younger than I thought he'd be. In the novel, Cold Sassy Tree, Olive Ann Burns talks about a small southern Georgia town. The novel drips with southern culture. One night, a grandson is gleaning wisdom from his grandpa, and they're sitting on the porch. The grandson says, gosh, grandpa, you mean you don't think Jesus rose from the dead? Grandpa says, I'm a saying that he did, or I ain't saying that it, he didn't. There's important son. What's important? is that when the spirit of Jesus came down on them disciples later, they quit sitting around moaning and groaning and trembling, and they got up and got to work. They weren't scared no more. The words they spoke had fire in them. Compared to a miracle like that, Jesus rolling back a dang rock and flying off to heaven ain't nothing. Because, you know, that same miracle is still happening right here in Cold Sassy right now. Crippled person or an invalid, or the meanest thief, or the most despairing misfit, why, he can catch hold of the spirit of Jesus Christ and quit being scared, quit being mean and nasty, and like, rise from the dead. Once his soul gets cured, no matter what his body's like, why, he can start a new life. And you know, that's why we're here. Every Sunday, supposed to be Easter Sunday in the church. Every Sunday is Resurrection Day. We gather to call upon God, to sing songs, to pray prayers, to read scripture, to remind ourselves God is present in our ordinary lives. So that next time Christ surprises us and comes to us in bread or toast sticks or chocolate frosting, or a person or an event or, or some justice or some peace, we might just get lucky and recognize him. Then we too will be risen from the dead and given new life. The disciples were not only reminded of the bond of friendship they had with Jesus, they were empowered to be followers of Jesus in God's name. Today we're going to share in this ancient meal of bread and juice Because you see, the bread is more than bread. The juice is more than juice. And I pray that you will know that the Spirit of God is present. May you know God's love. May you know God's comfort. May you know you have been empowered to be a neighbor. Maybe more than a neighbor in Mr. Rogers' language or disciples in Jesus' language, right where you are. Amen.